السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يبقه قولي اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما So uh, first and foremost I'll welcome you all in this uh, orientation session uh, that is titled I can learn Arabic language. So if you all can hear my voice, I want you all to type yes in your chat uh, chat uh, icon where it says chat. Whoever can hear me, I want you to type yes on your keyboards. I want to see your messages. Can you all hear me? Okay. Is everybody on board? Okay, I want to see uh, a show of uh, participation. So I want you to type yes if you can hear me in your chat uh, boxes of the GoToWebinar page. I am still unable to see your messages, but I hope and pray that you all can hear me. So first and foremost, let's begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, I'd welcome you all again. I'm Ibrahim Ali, and uh, I'll be hosting this webinar session of yours. And just a bit of background about my own uh, you know, Arabic learning journey before I begin talking about the importance of Arabic language. And uh, I studied Arabic at Islamic University of Medina. And uh, that was like uh, around 15 years ago. And I've been teaching Arabic for the past 14 years. And uh, I have been uh, conducting online Arabic programs, uh, teaching live uh, interactive Arabic programs across various states in the United States and other countries. And I, uh, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed me with uh, uh, various experiences through which I learned uh, you know how to better myself in Arabic and uh, I'll start talking about you know how I began learning Arabic uh, about my Arabic le language learning journey in a, in a few minutes but before that let's talk of uh, you know the importance of learning Arabic language why must we learn Arabic language I'd like to ask you I want you to type your answers in your chats Yes. We must learn Arabic to understand Quran. We must learn Arabic to understand our five daily prayers. We must learn Arabic to we must learn Arabic to uh, understand the words of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We must learn Arabic to be able to speak the language of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'd like to quote a few verses from Quran that talk about the importance of Arabic language. And I start with this ayah, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أنزلناه قرآنا عربيا لعلكم تعقلون Indeed, we have sent it down an Arabic Quran so that you may understand it. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Arabic Quran here. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't say Quran in Arabic. This ayah mentions categorically that Quran's identity is in Arabic. However, the message of Quran can be communicated in any language and through its translation into English, through its translation into Spanish, through its translation into Urdu, through its translation in Bangla, through its translation into English, through uh, its translation in any of the world's languages. And uh, Quran's translation can communicate the message of Quran, the least bit you can do, I, that I can do to understand the message of our creator, what he expects from us, what he wants us to do in this life, what he wants us to avoid in this life. So that is what Quran has in it for us. However, there is something pretty interesting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, at multiple places in Quran. And one of the verses is, is, is the verse of uh, Surah Al-Baqarah beginning, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and I quote, A'udhu billahi min shaytanir rajeem, bismillahir rahmanir rahim. 
إن وإن كنتم في ريب مما نزلنا على عبدنا فأتوا بسورة من مثله ودعوا شهداءكم ودعوا شهداءكم من دون الله إن كنتم صادقين فإن لم تفعلوا ولن تفعلوا فاتقوا النار التي وقودها الناس والحجارة أعدت للكافرين صدق الله العظيم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in one of the very powerful verses here, he says, if you are in any doubt, let me type, let me share my screen and let me know if you all can see my screen shared in a moment. Give me one moment here and we will be good to go. I will be sharing my screen here. One second. Here we are. All righty. Somehow I am unable to see your chat messages. Kindly type something to me just for me to confirm that you are on board and you are hearing and understanding everything clearly. And in the next like one whole hour, we'll be discussing about the importance of Arabic language and the natural way you and I can learn Arabic language and uh, have no issues with regards to facing difficulties or hardships. Okay, so I'm sharing my screen. And we'll be good to go. Okay, sharing my screen now. Alrighty. Uh, can you all see my screen now, everybody? I can see my screen being shared, so you must be too. So let me type some things. I recited a verse from Surah Al-Baqarah, in fact, a series of verses from Surah Al-Baqarah, and uh, the verse is, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِّن مِثْلِهِ وَدْعُوا شُهَدَاءَكُمْ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا Allah says, sorry, here. Yeah. And if you are in doubt that what we have sent down upon our slave whether it is from us or not then bring one surah like it produce one surah like it you know in translation you might say one chapter like it uh, and even call your witnesses. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is challenging you and me and uh, all the Muslims that if you are in iota of doubt, if you are in any doubt uh, in what we have sent down upon our slave, uh, uh, pointing at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whether it is from us or not, then bring one surah, then produce one surah like it, and even call your witnesses. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala later on says, uh, you know, if you are truthful, do it, attempt it. And then Allah says, then if you did not do this, if you are unable to do this, and I'm telling you, you will never be able to do this, then fear uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to produce something Quran-like. When I was growing up, when I was growing up, I would read the translation of Surah Al-Fatiha. And you and I have read translation of Surah Al-Fatiha in our native languages so many times now that we have memorized it. So uh, one of the ways Surah Al-Fatiha is translated is all praise belongs to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. The Lord of the worlds and, you know, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, uh, the most gracious and the most merciful. And then, uh, you know, master of the day of judgment. Master of the day of judgment. 
and the translation goes on Malik Yawmuddin and then we say uh, you know uh, after that Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in you alone do we worship we worship and you alone we ask for help and onwards now if you go through this english translation i used to wonder uh, because my parents taught me that you know quran uh, there's nothing quran like quran is the word of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no human can produce something quran like so i used to think that you know this english or this urdu or this bangla whichever language translation this french this spanish uh, translation i mean this construction of the meanings uh, of the uh, sentences can be constructed by anybody like a, a second grader a third grader student can construct a sentence all praise belongs to allah the lord of the worlds the most gracious the most merciful there's no complexity in this sentence there is no uh, i would say there is nothing uh, i would say very sophisticated about this sentence construction that a regular human being cannot construct so i used to wonder is it really what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has challenged you and me to construct as a sentence? But then it occurred to me that, okay, let me study Arabic language and I'll, I'll, I'll find out. So I was still a young teenager and uh, we as a family, you know, um, started learning Arabic somewhere. And uh, the first day went okay. The second day our instructor wanted us to, you know, memorize stuff. And uh, I was like, uh, why do I have to memorize stuff? He said, okay, say it with me. I said, okay, repeat. He said, okay, say it with me. Fa'ala, fa'ala, fa'alu, fa'alat, fa'alata, fa'alna, fa'alta, fa'altuma, fa'altum, fa'alti, fa'altuma, fa'altunna, fa'altu, fa'alna. And I was like, uh, excuse me, wait a second, Ustaz, Ustaz, can you tell me why are we learning it and what is the meaning of these? He said, no, no, just like learn and you'll uh, understand it later. Just memorize it. I said, okay i tried to memorize but i couldn't and sadly i had to drop out of that class because i was a person with bad memory and i was thinking if learning arabic is that important if learning arabic is uh, that essential then either the methodology is wrong or something's not working or i'm not uh, able to cope up with this methodology so i started looking for other programs i attended programs after programs and most of the programs were talking of grammar were talking about uh, basically the the structure the theory of arabic language Language. and I was like did I ever learn theory of my mother tongue my first language it, uh, you know in the beginning I don't remember ever that my mom talked to me uh, you know my, my first language is Urdu by the way and uh, my mom did not teach me Urdu in terms of grammar like I was a baby and my mom didn't say okay today we will be studying the parts of speech of urdu there are there are these many kinds of words in uh, in urdu one is ism one is feral one is half no i heard her talk to me in urdu and i acquired it by listening to it and uh, going through different consistencies i'll talk th about this experience of mine in a few minutes but uh, you know this was just to give you uh, uh, an inspiration that i drew why i wanted to study arabic because uh, when i read the translation of quran uh, it did convey the message that Allah wants me to understand of his expectation from me in this dunya, in this worldly life, and what he wants uh, me to avoid. However, this didn't make me, you know, uh, fall in awe. Because after all, when I stood in my five daily prayers, I could not offer my salah in Urdu. I could not offer my salah in English. I could not offer my salah in French. I could not offer my salah in any of the language. In fact, nowhere in this world, no anybody offers their five daily prayers when they're muslims their five daily prayers in any language but arabic except for new muslims who for the first few days have not yet memorized the supplications you and i recite in our salah so they can offer in their native languages but eventually they make a transition to arabic so i was wondering if salah is mandatory if offering salah is fard why not the language of salah its knowledge is far and i used to ask this question and you know i wouldn't get the satisfactory answer and you know uh, one day i came across this ayah of surah al-abbas and i was still a young uh, you know teenager i was reading this uh, surah this beautiful surah that starts with abasa wa tawalla a'ma and i won't go into its translation but when i came across this specific verse allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ الصَّاخَّةِ 
يوم يفر المرء من أخيه وأمه وأبيه وصاحبته وبنيه لكل امرئ منهم يومئذ شأن يغنيه and so on now this verse you know made me uh, amazed the reason being there's this word there that we got to stretch so long and that is and if you were to write this i would say <clears throat> it's like you know and if i were to use my pen here you know i'll draw a shadda here and i'll draw a long mud right so i don't i don't say asaha i say asaha i look at its translation and the translation said the deafening noise the translation told me that it is the deafening noise let me switch to my pointer again and okay second let me get rid of what i wrote um where's old drawings okay so this was the word and it meant the the deafening noise and I read the entire translation. Faida ja at the And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, the translation says that, you know, and when the deafening noise will come, when the deafening noise will come. So I read a bit of tafsir about it and I, I, I wanted to know what it is about. So I realized that this is the sound of the blowing of the trumpet. And we are talking about sur. So what we grew up learning about so the trumpet that would be blowed Israfil alayhi salam will bro, blow in the uh, trumpet and you know all that exists uh, shall die everything will perish and then the trumpet will be blown again and then all that has tasted death will be resurrected will come back to life and so on so uh, this word depicts that but when I hear this word or read this word the deafening noise I don't experience anything deafening like you know some of you might think of uh, you know, uh, exploding of a firecracker. The other person might think of something, uh, you know, heavy falling on the ground. And some, some of you might think of, you know, uh, gunshot. Some people might think of some sort of explosion, whatever experience they have in their life of the deafening noise. But as I look at the word, asakha, and this is long. We don't just say asakha. Quranic reading rules require me to put the med over it, a long one, and I say, and I realize that Allah does not only want me to know that this is the deafening noise, Allah wants me to experience it while I'm reading Quran, hearing Quran. And then when I read this English thing, the deafening noise, English grammar, English phonics do not does not allow me and you to say, the deafening noise or something. I, I'm sorry, I, you must be wearing the headphone and something, I'm exploding your eardrums. But just to give you a demo, this verse, this word from Quran doesn't only mean the deafening noise, it sounds like one. When you say, Asakha, and this effect can only be communicated in Arabic language and not a translation. You want to experience Quran in Arabic, I want to experience Quran in Arabic. So let's move onwards and discuss further, further examples from Quran. And, you know, that thing uh, motivated me that I must study Arabic so that I can understand in the way the companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam understood it firsthand in Arabic. So one day I was reading uh, another ayah, the first ayah of Surah Al-Haqqa, and that's uh, the third chapter, third surah in Juz Tabarak. Tabar that's 29 juz and uh, when I was reading it I found the first word amazing and that reminded me of this verse in Surah Al-Abbas and the surah begins A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Al-Haqqah 
مَلْحَاقَّةٌ وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَلْحَاقَّةٌ كَذَّبَتْ ثَمُودُ وَعَادٌ بِالْقَارِعَةِ فَأَمَّا ثَمُودُ فَأُهْلِكُوا بِالطَّاغِيَةِ وَأَمَّا عَادٌ فَأُهْلِكُوا بِرِيحٍ صَرْصَرٍ عَاتِيَةٍ and so on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on. Now, Al-Haqqa, what does it mean? So when I read the, the word Al-Haqqa, it sounded a very powerful word. I wanted to know what it means. Because it's a word you spend three or four seconds pronouncing it. And the rest of the surah, you could read it fast, but you cannot read this word fast. The Arabic phonic rules require you to stretch it long enough. And there's a reason Allah wants us to know it, hear it, experience it, and reflect upon it. And that reason is, now this word typically means the inevitable. The inevitable. And when I was reading the translation, the you know the translation began of Surah Al Haqqa, the third chapter, third surah of Surah Juz Tabarak, the 29 Juz. It said, the inevitable, Al Haqqa. What is the inevitable? So let me quote the translation. So Allah began the translation began by the inevitable, right? The inevitable. And then the second ayah, uh, what is the inevitable? Allah is asking us a question, more of a rhetorical question. Allah obviously knows what inevitable is. He's making us think what that inevitable, in, inevitable thing is. So the inevitable, what is the inevitable? And then what do you know? What the inevitable is? Let me make it all caps here. Okay. So it's like more of an exclamation. Uh, we don't draw these punctuation marks in Quran, but anyways. So what do you know what the inevitable is? And then, you know, uh, Allah says, Kadzabat Samudu. Samud, the nation of Samud denied it. It's something so inevitable, so great, so humongous, so overwhelming, so scary that, you know, Allah is saying, Kadzabat Samudu wa Adam bil Qari'ah. Ad and Samud. Samud and Ad, they were two uh, former ancient prosperous nations. Uh, they denied. Uh, the great disaster, this thing that what we call haqqa. We are talking about the day of judgment, yawmul qiyamah, the day of resurrection, the great day. So uh, they denied, and then Allah says, uh, because they denied it, they were perished. Right? Now, before moving onwards, uh, I would like to know, uh, I want you to type uh, yes, uh, if you can hear me so far, and so far you're able to connect with what I'm uh, you know, sharing with you. I want to see yeses. Let's see. One second here. Okay. Let me see if there are any questions. In the question tab. Okay, alhamdulillah. Good. I could see your yeses. All righty. Good. So, we are talking about, uh, you know, uh, the day of judgment. And that day is so powerful, so important, so heavy. The English word, the inevitable. I mean, there can be lots of things that are in inevitable, right? Sometimes we say uh, death is inevitable, right? Success is inevitable. Failure is inevitable. Uh, and uh, aging is inevitable. Uh, sickness is inevitable. Or, you know, poverty is inevitable. Prosperity is inevitable. How can we relate to the specific inevitable that Allah wants you and me to think of? Allah says, and English phonic rules do not allow me to say the inevitable. Whichever recitation of Quran I'm reciting Quran with, I got to say Alhaqah. But translation doesn't give me that idea, that experience. Quran, my brothers and sisters, is about experience. Quran, my brothers and sisters, is about uh, about connecting with the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reading, hearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, conversing with you and me. That is what Quran is. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not saying we send down Quran in Arabic. He's saying we sent it down in Arabic Quran so that you may understand it. Now, 
having talked about this, I mean, these are amazing, you know, gems or miracles of Quran, and we can spend days and reflect upon it. Uh, the question is not whether there are miracles in Quran, linguistic miracles in Quran that uh, you and I can experience. The question is how you and I can connect to Quran, can connect with the five daily prayers, can start thinking in Arabic language so that when Allah is talking to you and me, we connect with him. We, you know, shed tears, we cry, and we uh, become so addicted to the Quranic recitation that we don't feel like stopping to recite. We don't feel like, you know, Imam ending his recitation because many a time this has happened that the Imam is, you know, uh, reciting and his uh, recitation is so entrancing. Uh, so you see the Imam uh, cries and many a time because the Imam is crying, all of the Muqtadis or the Musallis who are praying behind the Imam, you know, end up crying because the Imam is crying. Somehow Quran has that experience. However, Imam is not just crying because he's liking his own recitation. Imam might be crying because he knows the power of this message. And you want to cry. I want to cry. What made Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu weep and cry? What made uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu weep and cry? What made Uthman ibn Affan weep and cry? What made Ali ibn Abi Talib weep and cry? What made Khadija al-Kubra radiallahu anha weep and cry? What made Aisha radiallahu anha weep and cry? What made Fatima radiallahu anha weep and cry? What made Khalid ibn al-Walid weep and cry? What made Abu Musa al-Ashari to weep and cry? And the list goes on and on. We want to connect with Quran at that personal level because we all have this one life, you and I, but to prove our worth, our true worth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defines in Quran. And he says, Allah is saying, indeed, we presented the trust to the heavens, to the earth, and the mountains. They all refused to be the custodians of this trust. But who carried it? Who agreed to hold this burden? Insan, man. And then so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that humans themselves took this responsibility upon themselves. So this life is short. And, uh, you know, we were talking about uh, these uh, aspects of Quran that cannot be captured through the English translation. So I'll uh, talk more. I'll give you a few more examples. Uh, but before that, I want us to... Uh, uh, see how many of us want to understand Quran directly in Arabic without uh, any translation interfering in their understanding. I want to see the messages typed as I. Just type I. So first one is me. I'll type I. Come on. I want to see eyes. Good. Good. Keep it going. I want everybody to type, please. We all are. Alhamdulillah. You know, sometimes... All of us want to, but when we say these things, sometimes we get rejuvenated, we get so excited, we get motivated. It's a good reminder. We get in the, in the zone, we get into the hype of that, right? So these are a few examples that I quoted from Surah Al-Abbas and Surah Al-Haqqa. There's some beautiful aspects of Quran, you know. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala uh, mentions in Surah Al-Muddathir, and this ayah is, وَرَبَّكَ فَكَبِّرْ A portion of this ayah is, رَبَّكَ fa it means like and you and you know glorify your lord and glorify your lord now this this combination of words and letters is so amazing if i split it it would sound like this ra ba kaf fa kaf ba and ra rabbaka fakabbir now check this out what's so unique about this do you see a pattern here? Let's see. Whoever sees a pattern, I want them to tell me what the pattern is in these letters. Ra ba kaf kaf ba ra. Yep. It's symmetrical. It's a palindrome. Good. It's both way the same. Reverse, exactly. 
And Brother Faisal says, same letters backwards. Yes, good. It's a rhythm. Brother Kamran says, Sister Sangeeta says, okay, yes, there's a pattern here. And the pattern is you read it from right side or left side. It makes no difference. You'll still read the same thing. Now, is this a coincidence? Some of you might say, oh, is this a coincidence? You know, there is no coincidence in Quran. Every word. Allah is challenging the Arabs. Allah is challenging the humans, non-Arabs, you and I. I'm not an Arab. I learned Arabic, right? So uh, Allah is challenging everybody to produce something Quran-like. And, you know, it was super easy for Arabs. The people of the language Quran was directly addressing, the, uh, you know, in the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It was super easy for them because they were great poets to produce something, you know, uh, in response to Quran, something in Arabic that would challenge Quran's structure, that would challenge uh, Quran's eloquence or something. However, you know, what did they prefer? The disbelieving Arabs, they preferred bloodshed. They preferred boycotting their fellow uh, family members, brethren, their friends, their uh, you know kinfolk. They boycotted them. That was the most difficult thing. But that is what they preferred because it was impossible to imitate something Quran like. Not in its English translation, not in its Urdu translation, not in its any language translation, but in its Arabic form. And that is what I want us to appreciate that Quran needs to be understood in Arabic. So how about the translation? Should I not read it? Should you not read it? No, I'm no way saying that. Reading the translation of Quran until we learn its language is your duty, is my duty, and we must be reading it. In fact, it would help us understand Arabic faster, learn Arabic faster, because you and I have only one lifetime, and we got to understand Quran not once, not twice, many, many times. So we must read Quran uh, over and over again with translation. However, is that it? We go we strive for excellence in each and area every area of this life and excellence in arabic is called ihsan so excellence in understanding quran would be to understand it firsthand now there are various methods that people use to learn arabic in you know there are various uh, opportunities around you there are various uh, programs that are around the world teaching Arabic and many of the programs in fact the most programs uh, that teach you to understand Quran they begin with enabling you to you know memorize uh, that word-to-word -word translation of Quran so like it's uh, when you're reading Al-Fatiha they make you memorize okay Alhamd means praise Lillahi Li means for Allah means you know Allah uh, Rabb means uh, Lord or Master Al Alameen, the world, Al Rahmani, the most gracious. So you may memorize the translations in English or in Urdu or any of your native languages or in Bangla or any language. And then what happens? You're offering your five daily prayers. And you know, when you're reciting or Imam is reciting Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, you are like busy navigating in your English translation that you memorized or Urdu translation that you memorized or Bangla translation that you memorized or Spanish translation that you memorized. And you're not paying attention to what Allah is saying. You are paying attention to what is the meaning of what Allah is saying. And that is fine. That is the first step. However, imagine you might not be focused enough to get the impact of the words that Allah directly chose to connect with you and me. Do you want to connect at that level of Quran that your mind doesn't think in subtitles and instead, right, the way I'm talking to you right now is the way you would understand the words of Allah firsthand. Who wants to get there? I want to see eyes. Come on, type I. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Good. Okay. So we are talking about uh, you know uh, various uh, opportunities around us. And let's talk of you know the grammar of uh, the grammatical programs that start off. I experienced learning Arabic language firsthand uh, when I didn't go to Medina yet uh, through a program that was starting with the grammar. And grammar was so complex. It was uh, focusing on making me memorize the parts of speech in Arabic and the kinds of words in Arabic. And then they say, okay, there is ism, fi'il, harf, and the definition of ism, definition of fi'il. And you know, months pass, and I am too good at knowing everything about Arabic but Arabic. So I can't help not analyze the words of Quran but through grammar. So like, uh, you know, I'm reading Al-Fatiha and I'm saying Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Instead of understanding it, I'm busy thinking, okay, where's the Muqtada? Where's the Khabar? Where's the Muta'alliq bil Khabar? Where is this? Where is that? Where, where is Fi'il Madi? Where is Fi'il Mudari? I'm so busy thinking in these technical terms that the experience becomes pretty overwhelming with me. And on the other hand, when I read English, study English, or listen to something in English, 
I am experiencing a whole different world. I'm experiencing a whole different experience where because I don't have to struggle. I don't. My mind gives me uh, the messages naturally. I connect with people speaking to me in English naturally without you know making me exhausted. So can we do that in Arabic? Yes, of course. So my question to you is, what language did you learn your mother tongue in, your first language in? Tell me. What language did you learn? You and I both learn our mother tongue in. Let's see. Okay, but the Faisal says uh, he learned English in English. Okay, uh, brother Muhammad Manzoor said Bangla, and uh, sister, brother Cameron says in Urdu, and brother Khaled Golden says in English. I want more responses. Please participate, participate, show me some energy. Okay, Hinsko and Urdu, brother Khuram Shazad, okay. And our brother Hayatullah says English. Jason is our English. Uh, Sayyid Khuram, uh, Urdu. Brother Smail Shah, Urdu. So it's a Shabana, RC, Urdu. Uh, brother Sadiq, uh, Al Baqali, English. Okay. Uh, Sayyid Waqas, Urdu. And Sister Fatima gave a very beautiful answer. She said she learned her mother tongue in the mother tongue, right? Itself. And Brother Muhammad Jamal uh, learned his mother tongue in Bangla, which happens to be Bangla itself, right? So let's say. Uh, my question that I'm going to type right now is Did, pardon me here, no Arabic, did you and I learn our mother tongue in another tongue? That's a thought provoking question, more of a rhetorical question. Did you and I learn our mother tongue in? Uh, another tongue, I would say, no, you and I learned our mother tongue in itself. Now, when that happens, we can think in itself. So I'll tell you my language learning experience that you must have experienced in your native languages. And uh, my experience was in Urdu, but I translated into English, right? So I was a baby. All mothers and fathers talk to their babies, even though they cannot talk. So I was a toddler. I mean, not a toddler. I was an infant. And uh, I just started feeding you know, on solids, semi-solids. So my mom, I heard my mom, I was a baby, and I mean, I'm just making up the story, but this is an experience that you and I will relate to pretty uh, easily. My mom asked me, Ibrahim, will you eat porridge? Imagine I was an infant. I cannot say anything. Do you think my mom would wait for me to respond or say yes or something? No. All of a sudden, the moment she said, Ibrahim, will you eat porridge? Something, you know, was stuffed inside my mouth. And it was like slightly warm and it had some soft texture and I like the taste. And, you know, she kept stuffing my mouth with something. And then the next day my mom said, Ibrahim, will you eat mashed potatoes? And something was stuffed in my mouth again. And I was happy. Wow, something different is coming in my mouth other than milk. And then one day my mom said to me, Ibrahim, will you eat steamed apples? And I didn't want my lips to, you know, have a mustache or something because all those days when my mom was saying, Ibrahim, will you eat something? Uh, I didn't know what to expect. So she was, when she stuffed something in my mouth, something would create a mustache over my uh, lips and under my lips. And I, it would, my chin would all be messy with whatever was going inside my mouth. So I knew what to expect. Something was coming my mouth's way. So I opened my mouth beforehand and my mom stuffed my mouth again with something. And I felt confident. Okay, I'm learning the human way of communication. And through experience, obviously. And then my mom, you know, when they said, um, Ibrahim, will you wear a red shirt? And I opened my mouth again. And I was surprised, kind of embarrassed. Nothing, I kept waiting with my mouth wide open. Nothing came in my mouth. And uh, surprisingly, something was put over my body. And I realized, wait a second, nothing was coming inside my mouth, rather something was put over my body. So I thought, what's, what's going on here? And my uh, mind, your natural mind and my natural mind told me that, wait a second, this time mom said something different. She did not say, Ibrahim, will you eat? She said, Ibrahim, will you wear? And when you say wear, something covers your body. When you say eat, some things, some things enter your mouth. And I'm learning my vocabulary without somebody telling me that, you know, eat and wear are verbs. And will you eat is the way to question or something. I'm learning my language. You are learning your mother tongue naturally through this methodology. 
and nobody is teaching me grammar, nobody's teaching me the meanings of words. My experiences are the best reference to the words that I'm uh, building and I'm listening to the language. And eventually I, uh, when I become slightly older, start copying, imitating uh, by uttering those words that my mom said. And I learned my first language naturally. That is what you do too. And uh, it, it, it's a walk in the park. It's a piece of cake. We don't remember ever being overwhelmed. And by the time you and I study grammar in school, we are already good in the language. So the terms of grammar, when they were taught in, uh, to us in school, we already have vocabulary. So when the teacher said, verbs are action words, so we know what verbs are because we had lots of verbs in our vocabulary. A teacher said that this, 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 this word is called a noun. So we already had many nouns to relate to those grammar terms. However, sadly, when we learn Arabic, we don't have vocabulary. When we learn Arabic, we are still deficient in the sentence construct, sentence structures. And in fact, many things in Arabic, in fact, in any language, are not there in another language. So Arabic is widely different than any other language. And I'll give you a core example. You know, the English language, for example, has a word called is. That is required. So if I say, uh, you know, if I say this, is a chair how many words do you see count the words this is a chair i want to see your counts and your messages come on bismillah yep four words exactly now i know you some of you must have studied arabic elsewhere and in arabic it's just two words and you say what you say let me change my direction here okay you say had a kursi you say had a kursi and when you say had a kursi count the words it's it's how many words here had a kursi just two words in arabic exactly good so in Arabic, you got to say just two words to say this is a chair. Now, as a learner of Arabic language, my teacher said, okay, hada kursi means this is a chair. I'm in a fix. Why? Because I'm counting the English word. Okay, I understand hada means this and chair is kursi. Which word is capturing is and a chair? Because in English, if I say this chair, is it grammatically correct statement? This chair? Is it complete? Is it a sentence? I want to see your answers. Come on. Yep. I want to see yes or no. Is this complete? Exactly. So in English, this is something grammatically wrong. Give me one second. Okay. And I have to say is and a. Uh. Now, who would teach me this thing? The teacher. So the first thing that we got to do while learning a new language and especially arabic language is to know how different arabic is than the rest of the languages and i would suggest that you can borrow inspiration from children on at how they learn languages how they learn any language or their first language you and i were once kids so you can use that strategy to learn arabic language as well now your question would be you know as kids as children, we were free and you know we were experiencing language. And as uh, kids, we were uh, simply you know, not uh, uh, busy or confused in life's issues. Uh, so we had time. So we had ample time. But now we want something like as a shortcut method. And you know, when we learn Arabic through grammar, because we are already good at the grammar of our languages, some of us would say it's easy for us to understand. But let me ask you this thing. Let me ask you this thing. What is Quran? Is Quran poetry? Answer this question. Is Quran poetry? Yes or no? No, Quran is not poetry. So tell me, is Quran um, an essay? Is Quran an essay? Okay, Quran is not an essay. Uh, is Quran... Okay, what is Quran? What kind of, uh, you know, literature? Is Quran something to do with literature? Any form of literature? Okay, it is guidance. Uh, Brother uh, Muhammad Mandur said, yes, it is guidance. That is the attribute of Quran. But what is Quran? 
like what is the structure of Quran? You know, uh, uh, when he, uh, Haryanto is saying it's a word of Allah, exactly, it's a word of Allah, not just a word of Allah, it's the spoken word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's a speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is what Quran is. That is what Quran is. It is what? It is speech of Allah. And that is what makes it Kalamullah. That is what makes it Kalamullah. Kalamullah means speech of Allah, saying of Allah, right? So that is what Quran is. So how must we understand Quran as a piece of literature or as a speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Tell me. What do you think? As a speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so you can connect with him, I can connect with him, and stay connected with him. Okay? So that is what Quran is, that is the kalam Allah. So uh, let me tell you, uh, you know, as kids, as kids, when we learned the language, in our, our mother tongues, we focused on these four skills. There are four, let me type here in Arabic, I mean in English, four natural language skills. And that they are first, when we weren't even born, and then even after we were born, we were active listeners. So we focused on wit skill. We use wit skill to learn the language. listening exactly so and you all, you and i can relate to we listen and eventually you know when our tongue muscles became strong enough we were like toddlers still we were infants still but we were slightly older we started speaking we started speaking right so listening and then speaking what's the second skill guys that we built after listening we copied what we exactly for jason you're nailing it what we heard we started copying that and that is what we call speaking you know speaking is one of the uh, amazing uh, blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that differentiates you and i from the animals and because allah says in surah al-rahman he says ar-rahman allama al-quran khalaqa al-insana allamahu al-bayan and allah begins by saying ar-rahman ar-rahman means the ocean of mercy like no, not just merciful or most gracious. It's like the ocean of mercy. That is what is absent in translation. And then Allah is saying, why he is Rahman? Allama al-Quran. He taught Quran. Khalaq al-Insan. He created man. You know, uh, teaching of Quran is more important than the creation of uh, humans. Why? Because that is how Allah's mercy's hierarchy, uh, hierarchy level is. And then he says, Allama al-Bayan. He taught him to speak. He taught him speech. So, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed you and I to speak in our native languages. So, and so on, you know, there are various ways to speak. So listening is the first skill we acquire in our first language followed by speaking. And we're using these skills to learn our language further. Now, every language in this world, every language in this world involves at least speaking and listening. Not all the languages can be, can be written or, uh, or read, right? Do you agree with this or not? Because there are certain languages that don't have a script that are just spoken. If you agree with me, say yes. I want everybody to be participative, please. Awesome, awesome, alhamdulillah. So, uh, listening and speaking is the, cat is the quality or aspect of every language humans speak in. But what are the artificial skills that, you know, the, uh, the like man, worked hard to develop that is reading and writing reading and writing so in order to build a natural understanding or natural i would say awareness of a language uh, this is the route step number one listening begin by listening followed by speaking followed followed by reading and followed by writing and this would activate a device that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted you and me the natural biological device in our brains, we call that lad. What do we call that? Lad. You may be wondering what this lad is. Can any anybody has heard this word lad before? 
I mean, not the English lad, it's an abbreviation. Can somebody tell me what is this an abbreviation of? Come on. I'll tell you. That's what I, I'm here for. Okay. Lad represents language acquisition device. Cool, right? Language acquisition device. You and I, as humans, you don't have to be a Muslim to have this device. You don't have to be a Christian to have this device. You have to be a human being. And this is there in each and every human, uh, human brain. That is called language acquisition device. It's not a machine or a gadget at some corner of your brain. It's spread all over your brain. And uh, you know, research scientists and linguists have named this device called la language acquisition device. And you activate your language acquisition device if you approach learning a language through these four skills of listening, speaking reading and writing sadly very unfortunately very sadly you know when we want to learn arabic language the majority of the people majority of the institutions around us they approach learning arabic teaching arabic as if you know uh, we don't you know listening is not important speaking is not important all we ought to be able to do is to read quran and understand it that is our requirement I'd say okay you want to read and understand quran that is why you are not interested in speaking arabic that is why you're not interested in listening and understanding arabic all you want to do is read quran and understand it and that's why you are memorizing translations okay five times a day the core purpose of your life, the core fundamental of your life, after the testimony of faith, after shahada, after the kalima that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is his messenger, that is your salah. The first question on the day of judgment will be about your five daily prayers. And if you answer that question well, you can move onwards. And the first question will be about salah. And that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from you and me five times a day. And if I offer my salah in congregation, if I offer my salah, even as a standalone person, not in congregation, what am I pretending to do? I'm uttering some words. And those words are meant to be speech. When my imam is reciting, those words are meant to be a speech of your creator with you. He is speaking to you and you are listening. However, you and I and everybody else wants to treat Quran as a piece of literature. And that is fine. The minimum thing you and I must do is to read Quran and understand it in our native languages, subtitles, translations. But what we are not doing here, tell me, what's missing in that equation of memorizing uh, the subtitles uh, of Quran, word to word translation of Quran, learning grammar of Quran, or learning what they call Quranic Arabic? What's different? What's missing in that? Tell me. I mean, people can claim that, okay, I understand the meanings of Fatiha when the Imam is reciting it. What's missing in the skill set equation? You may be reading it, understanding it, writing it, understanding it, but we are not able to listen to it directly in Arabic because listening and hearing are two different things, right? So when the Imam recites, we are only hearing, we're not listening. You know why? Listening is with understanding. Hearing is, you know, if I make a you're hearing me clap. You're not listening to me clap. You're listening to me. So there might be air conditioning going running in your house. Your phone might be ringing or something. You're not listening to it. You're hearing it. You're not pay, paying attention to it. What you are paying attention to is my speech or anybody whom you're listening to. So listening is another level, a conscious way. You know what's being said to you. You are processing. You know the meaning of what's coming through your ears. Your mind is connected to it. But hearing, you hear everything. Right, but you listen only what you understand. So remember, Quran, uh, the status quo is at most of us when we read Quran or hear, uh, uh, you know, pray in congregation and our salah, our five daily prayers, what happens? Are we listening to Imam recite or are we hearing Imam recite? Provided if you don't understand what's in Quran, what's going on? Are we hearing Imam recite or listening to Imam recite? based on the definition that we have learned. We are hearing. We are not just listening, we are hearing, right? Listening requires that you and I understand. Now, if you are, uh, alhamdulillah, aware of Arabic language, then yes, you will be listening to it. Now, where to word translations, when I memorize them, for example, what they do is, you know, uh, Imam is on the ayah number six, and I'm still uh, stuck on uh, the third ayah. 
what it meant, what it meant, or something like that. But imagine if you understand Quran firsthand, you are able to speak in the language of Quran. You are able to understand and comprehend the language of Quran. You are able to read and write the language of Quran as well. Imagine how naturally would it activate your LAD, what we call language acquisition device, right? And that is uh, going to help you learn Arabic language naturally, right? So how many of us want us to activate our LAD, what we may call language acquisition device given to you and me by Allah and master Arabic language? I want to see yeses, if you want to say yes, if you are in. Otherwise, I mean, you can enjoy this lesson. So Sister Shabana said she is interested. Okay, I want to see more. Okay, Brother Jason and uh, Brother Wasim Uthman is all for it. And Brother Muhammad Manzoor, Muhammad Ismail, Brother Khuram Shazad, uh, Brother Faisal Rahman. I recognize some names. Brother Kamran, Brother uh, Shahul Hamid, Brother Farhan Ibrahim, and uh, Brother Afzal. And uh, I don't know if they say Afzal or Afzal, but you know, my brother, uh, Brother Faisal, uh, Brother Hayatullah, uh, Brother Sayyid Waqas, Sister Waini. And uh, uh, alhamdulillah, uh, that's good, brother Ismail. Ismail uh, that we got to try, and that is so awesome about you that you try. And uh, sister Taranum, good, uh, brother Sadiq, and uh, brother Sadiq Abdul Baqi, Baqai, good, and brother Mahmoud Ghani, awesome. That's cool. So alhamdulillah, we are all on the same page that we want to activate this natural language acquisition device that Allah has blessed me and you with, right? And we have just discussed in brief, like, you know, how do we go about doing that? By learning to listen and understand the language and by speaking the language, by reading the language, by writing the language. Another question, one of you might ask me, many people ask me is, you know, uh, brother, you know, Egypt has a different dialect of Arabic. Saudi has a different dialect of Arabic. Syria has a different dialect of Arabic. You know, uh, uh, Morocco has a different dialect of Arabic. Algeria has a different dialect of Arabic. Tunisia has a different dialect of Arabic. Sudan has a different dialect of Arabic. Libya has a different dialect, dialect of Arabic. So when we learn to speak in Arabic, which dialect are we talking about? Because they are all so different. I would say, who said we'll be learning a dialect? We'll be learning the language you know, uh, that is called Fusha, that is called classical Arabic, that is the language of the poets, that is the language of, uh, you know, uh, that is the language Allah used in Quran, that is the language Al Jazeera transmits its news in to date, that is the language that unites the entire Arab world because the news, the professors in the Arab world, they, when they present their papers in the university, they read that out. The books that are written, that the newspapers that are published, the media, that the print media and the electronic media that uses the classical actual arabic language and that is what you and i inshallah will be learning to speak but our core intention is we are learning to speak in arabic to understand quran and the hadith and the five daily prayers and the entire ocean of islamic studies around us if you and i are inspired enough and uh, have energy enough to pursue that but our core target is to understand Quran and Hadith and our five daily prayers, right? However, we won't be selective. Okay, okay, let's only focus on Quran's words because there is no such thing called Quranic Arabic in the entire Arab world. You know, I studied Arabic language at Islamic University of Medina and there, nowhere in the university, in my university, there was no department that said, okay, bachelors in Quranic Arabic, or there was no course. There is no course, in fact, in the entire Arab schooling system, elementary, high school, uh, or uh, college that says, okay, it's a Quranic Arabic course. Why? I mean, Arabs have different dialects, but when they study Arabic language, they are studying the classical Arabic language. That is the Arabic language. There is one Arabic language. The dialects are offshoot. There are dialects in English as well. But that doesn't mean nobody can open the book of, uh, you know, uh, a storybook or a play or a general knowledge book or a science book. And because you're speaking a Scottish dialect, Irish dialect, American English or British English or Australian English, you are unable to read those books. You are. That's just the way you spoke. You speak things differently. But when you're writing, when you're communicating at the official level, you are formal and you use one same language that has the same rules. And that is true with Arabic as well. So we want to be able to listen to Arabic, 
understand it, speak in Arabic, so that we can understand the power Allah wants us to experience through when he said, al as I quoted, as as I quoted, and many other things, wa and, uh, you know, various other verses in Quran, entire Quran is to be read over and over again, and that is what Quran means, something that is read over and over again, and that is what you and I want to focus on. So these are the four skills that will activate your lab. Now, the core thing for you and I to understand is, is what? Is uh, after language acquisition device gets activated, what does Arabic language contain? There are three things, or what we may call three building blocks of Arabic language. How many building blocks of Arabic language did I just mention? Let's see who's paying attention. Yep. Uh, Brother Wasim Osman asked me a question uh, that how long is this course? Good question. Are you talking about today's session, Brother Wasim? Like today's session is until, so I am in Texas. So uh, for me, it's until my 2.30. For you guys, if you're in the East Coast, it would be, it's a one and a half hour long session. If you're in the East Coast, it will be from 2 to 3.30. For me, it is, okay. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll talk about that in, uh, in a few minutes, inshallah, Brother Wasim, if you can wait. So uh, there are three building blocks of Arabic language. Well answered, so, alhamdulillah, everybody is paying attention. And see, these four things are not building blocks. They are the, I would say, they are the instruments of learning Arabic language. They are the instruments of learning any language, but we are talking about Arabic language. But we haven't discussed the three building blocks of, you know, uh, uh, Arabic language as of yet. So the three building blocks are, let me type here, three building blocks of Arabic. What are they? Block number one. Uh, block number one is uh, sounds. Every language has sounds, right? So block number one is sounds. That's the core. That forms the core of the language. Because with sounds, you you attain the ca capacity to pronounce the words correctly, right? How to spell word, etc. Sounds includes the knowledge of the letters, alphabet, etc. That's sounds, right? So for example, there are unique sounds in Arabic that are not there in other languages, especially the sound of letter bad. You know, Arabic is often called as a language of lettered bad, lughat bad. Why? Because, you know, many of us try pronouncing, struggle pronouncing bad, and, uh, you know, they say, okay, some people say zwad. Some people coming from the Urdu background or other backgrounds, they might say zwad. Some people uh, make it like sound like a dal, like duad or something. But it is a very sophisticated pronunciation, but not difficult to pronounce. And, uh, you know, one of the sounds in Arabic that makes it unique is bad. And if you mispronounce it, the word's meaning might change. And we'll notice these things in our journey learning Arabic language. So sounds such as like bad, such as ha, such as pa, for example, such as. Uh, uh, that for example but uh, you know when you actually learn these sounds uh, if your teacher tells you when your teacher tells you the origin of these sounds by giving you the demonstrations you know many people struggle in pronouncing ha for example and some people spend months and they, they cannot say ha they, all they say is like ha they say ha they say ha and not ha so I'll, I tell my students okay ha is so simple to master you know why because letter ha is pronounced by a Chinese, by an English speaker, by Pakistani, by Bangladeshi, by, by Indian, by Sri Lankan, by Mexican, by American, by Britons, by uh, Australian, by anybody, by French, by any language speaker in this world, they, they pronounce ha. Some of you might say, no, my language doesn't have this sound. I'd say, no, your language doesn't. But you utter this sound when you drink cold water, when you gulp in cold beverage, a cold drink, after drinking, what do you say? You say, ah. now, if that is not ha sound, what sound it is? So it is a ha sound. However, I tell my students, when you say, ah, just throw it out further. Ha, ha. So there you go with letter ha. Does that make sense, everybody? So you know how ha is pronounced easily? So uh, no, you don't need to take notes. If you want to, Brother Khuram, uh, you are more than welcome. However, I mean, you are fine, uh, inshallah. And, and if you want, you are more than welcome. They might help you. So uh, usually what I, what I do whenever I'm, you know, uh, starting my Arabic programs, I, I take it as a prerequisite or I assume that, you know, most of my learners are aware of the Arabic alphabet. They must have studied, you know, how to read Quran elsewhere. So what I focus on is the second building block, and that is, give me one moment here, that is 
uh, vocabulary. That is vocabulary. So we have sound, building block number one. That is the core building block. Now, after sounds, the building block number two is vocabulary. And uh, Brother Jason, you missed the beginning. Okay, you know, this webinar is being recorded, so you can always replay that, inshallah, after you're done, like maybe half an hour or an hour right after the webinar, the recording will be ready to be reviewed. Share this recording with as many people as you can. You know, you will get reward by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, if they decide to pursue their Arabic language, you will have your share in that effort to share it with masses. I mean, flood your timelines of Facebook and have them you know, access the recording of this webinar because this talks about the importance of Arabic language and how you can learn Arabic and I can learn Arabic the natural way, just the way you learned your first language uh, easily without any trouble. So uh, we're talking about the building blocks of Arabic. We've spoken sounds of the language, what we call al-aswat bil arabiya. They are block number one. Block number two of Arabic language is the vocabulary. Block number three, vocab uh, okay, before coming to block number three, what comes to your mind when we say vocabulary? Come on. Uh, Brother Mirza, I cannot see you. I cannot see anybody else unless I, I, I give you camera control. All I can see is your messages. I haven't even activated your mic, so I, I can't even hear you. So even if you are uh, laughing, crying, uh, talking to someone, I, I encourage you not to talk to anybody. Just focus in the class. I cannot hear anything that's going on in your homes. So I just wanted to tell you that. So, okay. Vocabulary is meaning of words. But Jason says uh, it's meaning of words. Come on, other people. Vocabulary. Let's see. Tell me, what's vocabulary? What comes to your mind when we say vocabulary? And, uh, hey, vocabulary is, okay, words and their meanings, vocabulary, understanding the words, okay, nouns, details of stuff, definition of words, طيب, good, awesome. Second here, words memorized, expressing thought, learning new words, words. So alhamdulillah, we have an awesome list of ideas from you guys. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you and create our uh, journey, uh, you know, a blessed journey towards learning Arabic language. So vocabulary, let's say, I'll give you a classic example. You know, individual words, any word is vocabulary. And even sentences are also vocabulary. So let's say if I say house, it's vocabulary. The word house is vocabulary, right? If I say mosque, that's vocabulary. And if I say mom or mother, that's vocabulary. It's easy, like you memorize wordlets and you build vocabulary. But there are vocabularies such as like, for example, in English, uh, let's say, thank you. When you say, when you say thank you, when you say thank you, one second. yeah, when you say thank you, uh, as as a as a student of language, or as, uh, as an English speaker, uh, you know, when you were learning English, did you learn two different words, thank and you, and then you decide to join them together, or you learn thank you together as a way to express? Come on. Yeah. Together, exactly. So that means vocabulary is not just solo individual words. Vocabulary is how words are put together. Now, when you learn the word thank you, are you even interested in knowing the grammar structure thank you, uh, thank you contains? You're not bothered whether thank you are nouns or adjectives or adverbs or verbs or something. You learned it as a chunk and you just use it. That is how most vocabulary is learned, as chunks, words used in a beneficial context. So for example, you know, um you know we we learn thank you as a word you know uh in english for example you know in slang or you know many people are used to saying like what's up what's up man sup man so do you actually construct a sentence or uh an english learner learns okay i'm using question word what now i'll be using a preposition or something up i'll connect them adding an apostrophe s what's up do we do it like this or we learn learn it as a chunk come on we learn it as phrases, Brother Sadiq. Very good, awesome. We learn it all together. Such is the case with Arabic as well. Lots of things in Arabic are expressions. And the translation of Quran uh, actually fails to capture the Arabic expressions as it is. I'll give you a classic example. I'll give you a classic example. And the example here is, you know, uh, 
there is this word that is called the beauty of Arabic language. How many of us know of this word in Arabic called inna? Let's see. You must have learned it, read through it in Quran so many times. Let's see. I want to see yeses. How many of us have read or heard this word in Quran? Inna. All of us, right? Now imagine every page of Quran almost has some or the other version of inna. Some translators translate it as indeed. Some translators translate it as verily. Some translators translate is uh, it as certainly. Some translators translate it as surely. And you know there are ways like uh, indeed, verily, certainly, surely. Now are all these four words English words indeed, verily, certainly, surely? Yes or no? A simple question. Are all these four words the English words? They are. They are certainly English words. But there is one issue here. I mean, imagine if I say that, let's say I pick one of you. I am talking to Brother Khalid Golden. Okay, Brother Khalid Golden, I'm taking you as a demo. And I say, Brother Khalid, Brother Khalid, you are indeed a very good student and you indeed want to learn Arabic uh, to understand Quran, which is indeed the word of Allah. And indeed, we are going to study Arabic uh, in an easy way that will indeed make you master Arabic. And one final day, indeed, you will go to the masjid and understand Quran the natural way. And indeed, you will build a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at a personal level indeed there was nothing grammatically wrong but do we use the word indeed this often in english expression i want to see what you say yes or no do we use the word indeed in our in english language and our native language is with this uh, frequency no way how was my expression sounding to you when i was saying indeed every now and then every few words i was saying indeed indeed you weren't able to connect it was sounding odd. I, it sounded out of the world, right? You know why? Because uh, this word is not a staple word in English. Yes, it's an English word. That doesn't make it, like, I cannot just use it because that's not the English way. So with language comes a standard style of using those words. Because simply you know a word, you cannot just use it. Every context is specific for a specific word. And Arabic has lots of such words. So inna is more of an Arabic context specific word. So when you actually learn Arabic language, you know the power of inna. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Now, Imagine Allah is saying, In the Allah in Islam, in Surah Al Qadr, Allah is saying, In the Lailat Al Qadr, Anzal, Inna, Inna, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Asaf, Wal Asri, Inna, Al Insana, La Fi Khus, Inna is there in Quran because Arabic makes an expression powerful by using an inna yes it might mean indeed it might mean surely or certainly but it's not a staple word in any other language but in arabic and just like inna there are thousands of other words that are standard expressions in arabic and you learn them naturally when you activate your language acquisition device and you use these four skills of listening you, when you listen, you know how a word is used in what context. When you listen, when you speak, you know, you build the confidence of using those words. Well, the expression, you build the vocabulary the natural way. You just don't memorize the word list. How many of our, you know, computer folders, tell me very honestly, how many of us have ever come across vocabulary lists that tell you 80% uh, of Quran vocabulary lists? How many of us have ever come across these lists? Tell me. I understand 80% of Quran, vocab lists. Let's see. Come on. So the Kamran has come across, you know, some lists say 40% uh, of Quran vocabulary. Some, voca uh, some vocabulary lists say 50% of Quran vocabulary. Some uh, vocab lists have like 80% of Quran vocabulary. Yes. Tell me how many of us uh, saw it last year? How many of us saw it five years ago? Maybe 10 years ago? How many of us ended up memorizing those 80% vocabulary words? Tell me, come on. How many of us ended up memorizing that 80% vocab list? 
Let's see. Brother Jason has a vocab book. Tell me, what is that list doing in your computer folders or in your printed out notes somewhere, dusty? You don't know, because languages are not learned by memorizing word lists. Unless somebody is so serious, they want to memorize, they are like uh, memory geniuses and they, they learn, they wrote learn the translations. But I'm telling you, you and I have never learned a language by memorizing its vocabulary. Otherwise, you and I will simply buy an Arabic to English or Arabic to Urdu or Arabic to Bangla, Arabic to any other language dictionary, and we would memorize the entire vocabulary and we'd learn Arabic language. That is not how languages are learned. That is not how our lad language acquisition device helps us learn any of our native languages. So when I say vocabulary, vocabulary is ideally learned by experiencing the language. Sometimes it's individual words, sometimes it is uh, sometimes it is, uh, you know, uh, collective words, like, such as, you know, when you learn thank you in Arabic, you might learn different expressions saying, like, for example, when you want to say fine, you, you don't say, like, okay, I'm fine. You usually say bi khairin. You usually say bi khairin. Bi khairin means, like, fine. Now, is bi khairin literally meaning fine? I'd say no. Bi khairin means two words, like bi and khairin are two words. Whatever the meaning is, we use it to say fine in Arabic, like something that is all right, something that is fine. We say bi khairin. I'm not interested in what B means, what khairin means, because literally B means with, with, or by. And khair means good, goodness, with, good. So if I say, uh, uh, somebody asks me, how are you, Ibrahim? I'd say, and I'm with good, with good or by good. It won't make sense. So knowledge of vocabulary is not what individual fragments or not what individual words mean, but collectively what meanings the, uh, the sentence or expressions of phrases communicate. And that is what Arabic is about here, right? So. We are talking of vocabulary and, you know, uh, I gave you a demonstration that this building block of Arabic language uh, needs you to listen to uh, sentences, not just individual words, sentences using those words and then repeating them and then eventually reading them and then writing them down, activating your language acquisition device and, you know, learning Arabic on autopilot instead of you know you manually having to stare through because our mind is such so powerful that once you activate uh, it learn a sentence or two throughout the day whatever you're doing you keep repeating those sentences consciously or subconsciously your mind will start giving you uh it's uh mastery the way you learned your first language as a baby you were not consciously analyzing what your mom and dad told you your mind was doing the job so brick number three uh the building block number three is what oops i got to activate my okay uh building block number three is uh is uh what we call structures and grammar structures and grammar so in the hierarchy of importance in the hierarchy of the most important concepts to uh, to build your arabic language skill tell me what's the most important building block of any language in our case arabic language come on number one block sounds number two block block number two Awesome, vocabulary. <laughs> and uh, block number three. Block number three, come on, structure and grammar. Tell me, most Arabic programs around, they consider a cake, example of a cake, right? Is icing of the cake what makes cake a cake or the dough of the cake? Tell me. The dough, technically, because some cakes don't have to have an icing, right? Uh, I know uh, Brother Mirza only likes the cakes with the icing and the others. And Brother Muhammad Manzur, I can relate. You are a cream fan. But uh, in actual case, it's the dough, right, that makes uh, a cake a cake. And then you can decide to have an icing on top. What most programs do, they start with the icing. Because the icing doesn't have any dough beneath it, what does the icing land on? The empty plate. And because the icing lands on empty plate, there is no cake. And you're like figuring out how to manage this icing because it's spilling everywhere. It has no base to uh, you know, hold the icing. So grammar is the most important concept in any language. Yes, structure is super important. But they have their time. 
I learn the vocabulary first. I learn to construct sentences first, and then is the uh, is the turn of you know technical definitions and technical uh, you know theories and you know then then it would make sense. Okay, and ism is a person, place, things, idea, adjective, adverb, and more. A fail is a word that has a tense, past tense, present tense, future tense. A half is a word that makes no sense unless followed by another word, and then maybe you know I'd learn. A chart, okay. Then uh, you know, Muslimon, Musliman, Muslimin, Muslimani, 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 Muslimuna, Muslimina, Muslimin. I mean, I never learned my first language like this. I'm populating my mind with a theory, and then on the other hand, what's happening? I don't have the vocabulary. So those approaches do a good work, yes, but not for everybody. I dropped out of that program that taught me Arabic language. Like I'm talking about 15 years ago or 20 years ago when I started studying Arabic language. I dropped out. I joined again another program. I dropped out. Joined again another program, but I went to Medina. I went to Medina. I waited for two years to get in there. Once I went there, my teacher, you know, he had 35 classmates, and those 35 classmates, my, uh, I would say, my teacher uh, would teach us Arabic. The first day, he started talking to us in Arabic. So I thought, okay, he'll be giving us a, a bit of background, a bit of background uh, of what to expect in the program in English. But I realized. I have French as my classmates in Medina. I have Russians as my classmates in Medina. I have Americans, Canadians, I have Germans, I have Chinese, I have Koreans in, you know, as my classmates in Medina. Imagine, do French understand English? Yes or no? Let me see. Yes, brother Smile. <laughs> Come on. Very little. Like unless they, they've studied it, they won't. The Germans. Is it a normal language for them? I'm talking about the masses. No, right? A Chinese of all the people. No. So imagine what choice does a teacher have to teach us Arabic in? Arabic. And it was funny for us. Why? Because there was this brother from Sweden. He was like 22 back then. I was 17. And uh, he was 22. And uh, he has this big beard. He's a rework. He used to be a guitarist in his time, but he became a Muslim and he quit music. And he comes to Medina to study uh, Arabic and Islam. And he goes to the teacher, our first day of the class or second day of the class. He has this big beard, brother Abdullah. He asks, sir, can I use the restroom, please? Can I go to the bathroom? Can I go to the toilet? And our teacher is like sitting, ignoring him. And I, I'm thinking, how mean? I mean, he's a new brother, new reword. And you know, the teacher should be polite and stuff like that. And the real thing was the teacher didn't know what he was saying. And even if he did, he was teaching us a lesson. And that 22-year-old fellow with this big beard, like he was a brother Abdullah from Sweden. He was a reword. He started jumping, Sheikh, 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 because he had to relieve himself. He had to rush out to the bathroom. And we are all in the class, you know, 35 people in our class, 8,000 students in the university, 35 people. So, uh, and then our teacher said, like, did a gesture to repeat. And he said, Naam, 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 Ustaz. And he said, Hal adhabu ila al may, I, may I go to the bathroom? That, that's what it meant. So he repeated and, you know, that is when he went. However, when you learn Arabic language online through this immersion direct methodology, you don't have to, you know, I won't, I won't know whether you want to go to the bathroom or something, you can go always. But uh, just to tell you the program that inshallah we will be uh, doing uh, for the next like around uh, two months would uh, uh, be primarily focusing on building your language through this language acquisition device where uh, you will actually learn to uh, you know um, uh, learn to process Arabic language through these four skills listening speaking reading and writing yes does that mean I won't be using any English no I will be using English wherever it, uh, it is time for grammar and structures I'll say some English but most of it I'd uh, you know uh, take you to through the experience I'll give you a quick demo in whatever little time we have left and then you know uh, we will uh, talk about it so tell me now, uh, let's say this is lesson number one. What I want you to do is just listen, okay? Are you all with me? Can you all see this slide? If yes, type yes, come on. Um, it's, not, it's close to Rosetta Stone, but not the same. Why? Because like, uh, Rosetta Stone doesn't tell you how to use your strategy, how to learn. It does, it, all it tells you is just to observe and follow the commands and you just go through the process. I'll actually share with you how you can master Arabic, your strategies, you know, in terms of coaching. So it's not just teaching you Arabic. I'll tell you, okay, 
these things can be learned easily using this methodology and those things can be used with this methodology and individually like for example you know if i'm talking to sister taranam sister taranam might be facing difficulty in retaining vocabulary i'll tell sister taranam see this is the tip that you could use to uh, accelerate your vocab acquisition or for example brother sadiq or sister shabana are facing difficulties in sentence construction i will guide them through their sentence construction through our arabic language journey and all of you like individually will get to know what strategy works for you which doesn't so uh, if you all can see this let's move further so uh, the point here is says mahada mahada says mahada ma ma'ana mahada mahada what is this what is this so i know most of you are like uh, beyond this stage but this is like just the basic to give you a demo fa radidu ma'i i want you to repeat hada baytun hada baytun hada baytun say it and i want you to use, use your fingers when you touch this house picture don't touch your screen it will get spoiled so hada baytun hada baytun keep your fingers far from your screen hada baytun hada baytun and next is say with me radidu qulu hada masjidun hada masjidun hada masjidun hada masjidun hada masjidun hada babun hada babun hada babun hada babun hada babun hada kitabun hada kitabun hada kitabun hada kitabun hada kitabun i just want you to listen and repeat don't worry what it means and stuff i'm just taking you through an experience here hada qalamun 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 hada miftahun hada miftahun hada miftahun hada miftahun hada maktabun hada maktabun hada maktabun hada maktabun hada maktabun hada sarirun hada sarirun hada sarirun now coming back to our words first few words that we learned, learned Okay, I want you to hear the song and I want you to repeat the song with me. Baytun, baytun, ma hada, baytun, baytun, ma hada, hada baytun, ma hada, hada baytun, ma hada, masjidun, masjidun, ma hada, masjidun, masjidun, ma hada. هذا مسجد ما هذا هذا مسجد ما هذا باب باب ما هذا باب باب ما هذا هذا باب ما هذا هذا باب ما هذا we're getting back to our work where we left off okay now a quick uh, <clears throat> uh this is uh, the vocab is from the medina series there are various books that i use together uh, to uh, teach arabic language so this program that is inshallah starting off you know uh, in the coming week is basically uh, going to be based on live live lessons every sunday uh, eastern time uh, eastern time 2 to 3 30 and uh, central time uh, 1 to uh, 2 30 and you could convert i mean you could see the details in the emails that you get of the class and then there'll be uh, pre-recorded lessons every week there'll be pre-recorded lessons shared every week and you will uh, participate in the class and it's a two-month program do we learn all of our, our arabic in just two months i'd say no this is a good fast accelerated beginning and right after the two months i'll tell you a path that you have to expand your arabic even further to the point that this ramadan inshallah this coming ramadan would be a different ramadan for you all the uh, the taravi experience that you have will be a different experience and your connection with quran will be an entirely different connection with quran that is my wish and my dua and that should be your wish and your, your dua too that is what i expect now what i want you to do now, many of us would be Many of us would be thinking like, okay, like I've done Medina books. I've done this book and that book. We are talking about books. We are talking about building these four skills, listening, speaking, speak, reading, and writing. 
uh, with respect to understanding Quran, I'm talking about that natural way to understand Quran, focused on uh, understanding Quran, but listening, speaking, being able to listen to Arabic, speak in Arabic, construct your own sentences, being able to read and write Arabic. I'm talking about those uh, these four skills. If you are not good at these four skills, no matter what books you have done, you might have studied grammar, lots and lots of grammar, this program is for you. And if you are a pure beginner, this program is, you know, the best program for you, the best way to begin learning Arabic language. Now, if I, if you would like to, you know, uh, know how you could register for this program, there's a special discount, and that is uh, only for a limited time. Uh, the online two-month program costs you only $99, and uh, that's after a discount. The actual price for this specific program is to uh, one $140, and uh, uh, when you register right now, this is the link you could use to register. It's like iknaconvention.org slash Arabic. And once you register, inshallah, you will be getting the details on how you can participate in uh, this class. I will share the PDFs, the notes. And not only that, I will keep a check in each and every one of you uh, on how you are doing in Arabic. There will be live calls. You can talk to me. You can you know, ask me questions 24-7 through our WhatsApp, Facebook uh, support group, inshallah. And uh, together, we will start learning Arabic for some of you. It's going from here to here, and you have already done some Arabic, but because you are not able to speak, uh, understand, and you know, uh, converse in Arabic language uh, to understand Quran, or you don't have the fine listening comprehension, this program is still for you. If you have any questions, you can send me an email anytime through this uh, convention. Uh, I mean, through this. Uh, you know, go to meeting webinar page and you can share this today's sessions recording with all you care about, with all you want them to learn Arabic, your family members, your friends. And just to tell you again, you could register right now, inshallah. The the, the, uh, the more you delay, the more I would suggest, uh, I, I fear that, you know, you might lose interest, but uh, utilize this hype, that utilize this uh, motivation that you you are in the zone right now and you want to learn Arabic. You know why? Because many people say that they want to learn Arabic, they want to learn Arabic, they should learn Arabic, and, uh, but what excuse most of them make? They say, because I have no time, because I have no time. Isn't that the most common excuse you also give yourself in not advancing enough in Arabic language? Because I have no time. But you know, my teacher taught me something. That is, he said, Ibrahim, I must learn Arabic. You know why? Because I have no time. Instead of using the excuse and saying, uh, you know, I cannot learn Arabic because I have no time. Say to yourself, say to yourself, I must learn Arabic because I have no time. Do we have time? Tell me, do we have a life full of thousands of years? No, we don't. We cannot predict whether we live for 10 days or 10 years or 50 years or 60 or 70. But what we can easily predict, inshallah, is because we have no time, you and I must learn Arabic. It's that important. Your five daily prayers, each day that is passing without you and me understanding our five daily prayers, it's a day lost. That doesn't mean you should stop offering your five daily prayers. No way. Offer them but strive to learn, decode the language of what you offer in those five daily prayers. Because Allah says, Inna salata tanha anil wal munkar. Imagine, motivate yourself. You want your tongue to utter the words of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He spoke in Arabic. Out of his love, you can revive the sunnah. Allah chose to send me into an Urdu speaking family, into a Bangla speaking family, into an English speaking family, into a Spanish speaking family, into a Chinese speaking family. That was his choice. But there is a second language that unites you and me as an ummah. That is a common second language, and that is the classical Arabic language, inshallah. So uh, if you have any questions, please uh, ask me right now, or you can ask me later by messaging uh, the email. Come on. Uh, yes, yeah, Sister Jamila, you can contact me. Uh, like whoever needs financial assistance, uh, you know, uh, let me know this is uh you know you could contact the email address that you uh got the webinar alerts uh you could text them or you could email me at info at arabic for oma dot com and the moment you register by the way by the way just to tell you all uh the moment you register uh, you will, uh, inshallah, uh, receive the details on how we go about, you know, accessing the pre-recorded lessons every week and how to attend the live lessons every week. You will be made the, uh, made part of the, you know, class resource WhatsApp group and uh, Facebook uh, resource group as well. 
So you could post your questions anytime over there about whatever we are learning and you'll get your answers. You could contact me, schedule a live call with me personally as well, and I'll help you understand those concepts. Uh, brother Farhan Ibrahim is asking this uh, question. Give me one second. Somebody is calling. Good. Okay. One second. Where is my keynote? Okay, here it is. Okay. Uh, once you complete this program, uh, okay, yes, this is uh, only a beginning program, brother Farhan. Uh, yes, it, there'll be a long-term um, path that uh, expands to like up until one whole year. So once you spend these two months, then I'll tell you for the next ten months uh, what I have for you to offer. And uh, when you become part of it, believe me, your Arabic language would be that you won't just understand 80% of Quran, inshallah, you'll understand most of Quran and uh, right after completing the entire program. But this two month is a beginner program. You get an appetizer, you get a taste, you start uh, getting used to the methodology. And then once you switch to that program, that program I call is Arabic 360. And inshallah, when you get in there, you will uh, notice that uh, your skill set, the four skill sets in Arabic, listening, speaking, reading, writing, your ability to understand random portions of Quran, your ability to, to speak in Arabic, in classical Arabic language for longer time uh, times, you, uh, your ability to understand the hadith, the Islamic literature would, uh, inshallah, be at the next level. Just to tell you, I've taught at Bayina in the past, I've taught at, uh, I teach currently teach at Taqwa Seminary, and Alhamdulillah, I've had an experience of, uh, you know, teaching across the world in different uh, forums, different platforms, dealing with uh, different uh, age groups, dealing with different language speakers. So I understand the difficulties or challenges one might encounter in learning Arabic language. So I will help you, I'll hold you by the hand and take you to the next level of learning Arabic language, inshallah, bismillah. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, you know, you could uh, email me or the email you got this uh, webinar uh, info from. You could email me at info at arabicforumma.com and you can ask me. But I would encourage register now, inshallah, because uh, this there's a special pricing and that is $99 only. And if, uh, in one second, it's $99. And if anybody, let me just tell you, if anybody finds it like uh, too overwhelm, overwhelming a pricing, uh, you know, uh, you're more than welcome to contact me and uh, I'll, I'll help you out. And if somebody is interested to sponsor someone, any of the learners, you, you can reach out to us. And uh, I would say you can register now, inshallah, at uh, iknaconvention.org uh, forward slash Arabic. You click on it or you copy and paste or you type in your browsers right now on your cell phones, you could do it, on your computers, you could do it. And, and forward the word about today's webinar to your uh, contacts, inshallah. And, uh, Hopefully, everybody will uh, benefit when they see the recording. Uh, they'll learn new things on how they can pursue learning Arabic naturally, as easily as you learned uh, your first language, and or solely to understand Quran and the word of Allah. Uh, you know, we recite in our five daily prayers, bismillah, and more. That's just the beginning. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us uh, in this journey. I'm looking for more questions, please. Uh, Okay, this is the uh, this is uh, brother Sadiq asked a question. What is the site? No, to register, you register at iknaconvention.org uh, forward slash Arabic. You register here for the uh, for the upcoming program. That is a two month program and uh, around twenty hour of lesson time. And uh, that is a combination of live and recorded. You'll get the details once you go on this link. You'll get the details. But uh, I would say. Click on this, it will take you to a page and then join now or register now button over there and register right away. And if you have any questions, you are unable to register, you're facing some difficulties uh, in your like uh, website and stuff, uh, please reach out and contact at info at arabicforumma.com or the other email address you got uh, the webinar mail from, inshallah. There is a syllabus, whether it was Seema Uthman, but syllabus like, uh, you won't get a syllabus. You'll get the target, like over, uh, you know, over the next span of these many words. So you'll, once you go to this page, you'll get the details of, uh, you know, the objectives of this program, inshallah. Will the Kamran is saying something after registering? If okay, good question. <clears throat> you know, all the classes, live or pre-recorded, get recorded as well. So even if you are traveling, if you cannot participate live, the classes are yours to uh, attend. The classes are. Yours to uh, attend, 
and uh, basically uh, you know you can attend it 24 7 you don't have to be there in the live class but live class some people you know want the live lessons so they are there to help you out inshallah uh, it doesn't allow you to register using uh, but the Saudi uh, did you try going to the uh, website iknaconvention.org uh, slash forward slash Arabic? You don't need to buy any books. I'll email you the PDF. I'll, you'll get the PDF notes. You'll get the PDF materials the moment you register, inshallah. Within a day, you will get the PDF materials and uh, the worksheets and whatever tasks we do. You won't have to buy any book. You can take a printout of that. I'll tell you, send you the handouts and you will take a printout of that. Uh, Brother Wasim Uthman, it's not similar to Bayinab. Uh, so here we'll be talking about Arabic language. So you won't just learn everything about Arabic language, the theory of it, you'll actually learn Arabic language, the vocabulary, the, uh, you know, the four skills that we said, listening, speaking, reading, and writing, right? And obviously grammar, where and when it is necessary. But this course is not solely about grammar. This is enabling you to understand Quran directly without thinking in subtitles and thinking in grammar, inshallah. Okay. Okay. Can you use this link right now to register, uh, Brother Sadiq? Uh, this is iknaconvention.org slash Arabic. Uh, Brother Muhyiddin Sayyid is saying it's not allowing you to register. Let me see. Here. Ikna Convention. It would take you to the page where, which has some of my demo videos, and you'll you'll see a link. You click there. Let's see, brother Wasim Osman. More vocab based. Yes, brother Wasim Osman. Exactly. More vocab based. Our brother Kamran Khan was able to register. Alhamdulillah. And Ziaudin Sheikh as one registration. So whatever you want to, uh, like you know, sometimes it's. Uh, it gives you a choice to register for one person, register for two people. You can also decide to sponsor someone. It doesn't allow you to register, Brother Sayyid Khuram. Uh, can can you kindly let me know? Um, um, yeah, Ibrahim. Yeah, Brother Fran. We are seeing some issue. Let me uh, give us like five minutes. We'll fix it and uh, people can start registering after that. Okay. Okay, inshallah. Zakallah khaira, Brother Fran. So there is an issue that's been, inshallah, sorted out. So hopefully within five minutes, uh, it should be up and running. Uh, if you have other questions, feel free. And share the word about this current webinar that we had today share the link participation link even even though the live event is uh finished now finishing now uh but they can still watch their pre-recorded content of this webinar and get motivated to learn arabic the national way any question uh, Brother Faisal Rahman, your question is, uh, you uh, yes, you would need a microphone in the live class uh, participations if you want to, because I might ask questions and I might encourage you all to repeat what you say. And I'll give you microphone controls for whosoever I'm asking the question in the class. So it, ideally, you should have a microphone. If you're using a laptop or something, you should have a built-in microphone or something and a set of headphones. Uh, unless uh, you know your computers have speakers, but headphones often allow us to pay attention to the class exclusively. And brother Jam Muhammad Jamal, uh, yes, exactly. You will get the recorded class. If you miss the live class, you will always have access to those recordings because uh, you know many. In fact, many people prefer to uh, learn Arabic on the go. Sometimes they show up in the live classes. I encourage uh, them to show in live classes, but uh, you know uh, it's always fine. They can access the recording. And uh, you know they could download the videos as well. Yes, if you could just wait for a few minutes, Brother Farhan is trying to resolve the issue of registration. On-site class, Brother Qaisar Khan. Okay, good question. So, uh, is it registering right now? Can you all try whosoever was facing difficulty?
Yes, this is a one-time charge, Brother Hayatullah Ahmed. For the two-month program, yes, it's a one-time charge. And after that, you'll have an option of, you know, whether you want to continue. Uh, okay, Brother Mohideen Said is able to register. Alhamdulillah. So all those who are facing difficulty in registering, inshallah, the registration uh, should be able to go through now. So do with it, iknaconvention.org uh, forward slash Arabic and uh, register your spot there. So let me see. Uh, okay, the first class, inshallah, Brother Mahmoud Ghani is next week, inshallah, next Sunday. And uh, Brother Qaisar asked me a question, am I offering a side class? Like you mean like in person, not online? I live in Dallas, Texas. I teach Arabic here in Dallas, Texas. And uh, I travel to different communities around to conduct weekend programs. But uh, more than that, you know, my major focus is the online program. So even if I do travel to a community uh, and conduct a program, that program would direct students to my online program eventually because we could do only this much in a live class, especially if I'm not living in that community. And if you live in Texas, if you live in Dallas, Plano, you can benefit. Yes, exactly. If you are listening to the phone, Brother Faisal, uh, you can still participate. You can use the phone microphone. Yes. I'm just dealing with your questions. Brother Mahdeen said, she, okay, Brother Ziauddin Sheikh said that he's able to register. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Congratulations. And uh, can you get a senior discount, Brother Sheikh Bakhsh? Inshallah, brother, uh, you can like contact uh, if Brother Farhan, you're listening to our conversation. Uh, if you could take, you, uh, we have his uh, email contact, inshallah, so you can reach out and you can contact at info at Arabic for Ummah and uh, you'll be facilitated, inshallah. I am, okay, Brother Muhammad Jamal is registered, Brother Sayyid Waqas is registered, Brother Qaisar is registered. And Brother Mirza Khurasani, you are still getting errors. Uh, you can't register. Can you try again? And uh, okay, Brother Sayyid Khuram is registered. And uh, okay, Brother Kamran Khan needs senior discount. Okay, you can reach out to us, inshallah. And uh, uh, Brother Sadiq said he was able to register. Alhamdulillah, Brother Jason is able to register. And Brother Muhyiddin is able to register now. Alhamdulillah. Uh, any questions, feel free. They might be coming in your way. However, I would say it's just $99. Go ahead and inshallah, uh, it, it will be a good beginning for you. Questions, questions, questions. Got it, Brother Mirza. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Any questions? Even after the link, uh, I mean, after the webinar is over, officially, you're allowed to leave. It's like 247. Am I in and your end? It's 347. When the, you have any questions, feel free to send an email uh, through you know info at arabicproma.com or ideally to the address you got this webinar uh, notification from. Okay. And spread the word around in your family, in your friendship circle. And inshallah, if you have no more questions, we can inshallah dismiss the lesson. Any questions? Going once. Ask me questions. Feel free to ask questions. Like, what's one thing that might be stopping you? Because remember, I must learn Arabic because I have no time. You must learn Arabic because you have no time. I'm here to facilitate you, anyways. Whether there are affordability issues or any issues, I'll help you answer your queries, inshallah. Brother Mirza, my salama. Okay, after two months, brother uh, Kamran Khan, you should expect, uh, okay, very good question. You should expect yourself to be able to construct short sentences and understand short Arabic sentences involving, involving uh, you know, day-to-day uh, -day context. Let's say, you know, uh, you'll be able to recognize uh, quite a few words on every page of Quran, especially the words that have to do with like conjunctions and uh, prepositions and uh, some standard verb expressions in Arabic, what we call ta'bir that are not standard on words, you learn them as chunks. You know, when we spoke about how we learn vocabulary naturally, not just as standalone words, you would be learning many of those uh, vocabularies so that, you know, you will start getting the gist of what the expression is about in Quran, uh, in random ayat, but not like uh, the entire Quran. 
this two month program is to give you a solid enough foundation to move on with the natural uh, Arabic learning methodology that involves learning Arabic in Arabic. I will be using my gestures to explain the expressions, uh, the, the vocabulary, and not translating it to you. Uh, each time I say those things, I might translate it once, but then I'll get you used to repeating those things and your mind to, you know, uh, build that four skills in Arabic, listening, speaking, reading, and writing, inshallah. I hope I answered the question. Brother Mahmoud registered. When will I understand Taraweeh prayers? Brother Kamran is asking. Brother Kamran, inshallah, if you continue, whosoever wants to understand this Ramadan, this coming Ramadan, Taraweeh prayers, inshallah, most of them, not all, I'd say quite a lot of it, I will say right after these two months, there's another follow-up like a program that is the mainstream program called Arabic 360. When you join that, you will have a different experience this Ramadan. I'll share certain tips how to speed up your understanding because that program is like a, a you know 10 month long program after you've attended this two month program. And uh, once you start, uh, maybe somewhere in January, you'll, you'll have done January, February, March, April, and May, part of May, while you're still studying, you would be able to have a different experience of Taraweeh and Quran. And by the end of 2019, you'll be inshallah a pro. Bismillah. But I'm telling you, your coming Ramadan, inshallah, I intend to make it, uh, through Allah's help, a different, a better experience of understanding Quran, inshallah. Uh, more questions? Any question about, you know, the methodology that we discussed? Uh, Brother Khalid is asking a question, how much is the Arabic 360 program? You'll get to know. Like, uh, if you go to the website, it would, it would give you a big, uh, it would quote you a, an undiscounted fee structure right now. But uh, I'll tell you, you'll be surprised to know how low you could register for in the Arabic 360 program right after this two months uh, program, inshallah. And uh, you won't be disappointed. Inshallah. This current two month program would have costed you around like $140. And uh, it's costing you like uh, around $99 right now. So even for the rest of the long-term program, we, uh, you know, alhamdulillah, have uh, uh, options for everybody. Like nobody decides to not register simply because they cannot afford the fee. We accommodate everybody, inshallah. So if finances are your concern, I'd say stop worrying about it. Focus on learning Arabic. We'll help you out. Alhamdulillah, Brother Kamran. I'm glad. Thank you. More questions? See, it's just $99. Just to, you know, some people are like thinking whether I should go ahead or not. It's just $99. And I mean, imagine, uh, you know, we spend uh, lots of money going out, eating out or something. So maybe, you know, two family eating uh, outings or something is what uh, this is about. However, in two months worth of Arabic, is it? it's two months worth of Arabic that is going to take you closer towards understanding the word of Allah, understanding your five daily prayers and teaching you a new language. I mean, it's more than worth it, inshallah. Brother Mahidin Sayyid, good. Uh, please don't add that Just remember. Any other question? Uh, okay, I'm not keeping a track over the registration. Give me one moment, and inshallah, I will go through your registration. Give me one second here. I will just give you an idea. I see a few registrations gone through, alhamdulillah. I see some registrations. So inshallah, as soon as you register, perhaps you'll be getting an email telling you that you're registered. Any questions, everybody? Shall we call it, call the session off? Okay, so let's wrap up. 
if you have any questions, you have the emails uh, to contact and uh, do not hesitate. Inshallah, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika, ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu laik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. And uh, see you inshallah, bi'idhnillah, uh, in the next lesson, next week. And uh, spread the word around again. If you, have, if you have any questions again, feel free to reach out. Do not hesitate. Because you must learn Arabic, I must learn Arabic, because we have no time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Let me end this webinar. Stop sharing screen. Alrighty. And. And webinar. It's under file menu. Uh, sorry, Brother Farhan? It's under the file menu on the top. Yes. File and webinar. Yes, I'm doing that.